Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us see module 3 of Basic Electronics and Communication Engineering that is Embedded Systems. In the previous videos, we have seen the first two modules. Let us get into the module 3. In this video, we are going to discuss the definition of embedded system and the difference between embedded system and general purpose system and what is the classification of embedded system and few applications we are going to discuss. Let us start with the definition. How to define an embedded system? What is an embedded system? Embedded system is an electronic system or we say electromechanical system. Why? Because an embedded system will be consisting of some mechanical component also or the device will be manufactured by using mechanical system where electronics are going to be embedded with that. That's why here the name is embedded system. And it is designed to perform a specific function. This is very important thing here. A embedded system is a electronic system or we call it as an electromechanical system. It is designed to perform a specific function. And it is a combination of hardware and firmware. Here firmware in the sense it is a software. There is a hardware and to the hardware we are going to use a software program to embed on hardware. That will be an embedded system. Few examples are an embedded system can be a automotive car where many functions of the car will be consisting of an embedded system and a printer can be an example and few operations in the aerospace can be an example and a best example is a digital camera and some gaming equipments and uh, toys or the robotic equipments. So these are few of the examples we can give like a gaming machine, camera, smartphone. These are few of the examples. So let us see the difference between what is an embedded system and general purpose system. General purpose system in the sense the computer what we are going to use. Embedded system in the sense it is a kind of a camera. Let us see the difference. General purpose system is a combination of generic hardware and general purpose operating system for executing a variety of applications. Here you can observe it will be having a general purpose operating system and it will be used to execute variety of applications. But in embedded system it is a combination of special purpose hardware. It is not a generic hardware. It is a special purpose hardware designed for a specific set of applications only specific application the embedded system is going to do. If it is a calculator, it will be doing only the calculations. It will not do any other functionality. Even in this calculator, we will be having some software inside. So that this system will be called as an embedded system. And the next thing is with respect to the OS is concerned, in general purpose system, in our computer, we will be having general purpose operating system. We call it as GPOS. In embedded system, we will be having we may have or we may not contain an operating system. In some advanced embedded system nowadays we will be having operating systems. In the previous cases we will be not having any operating systems at all. And applications are alterable here in the general purpose system. Means the application of a computer can be anything. When it is connected to a internet or multiple operations we can do. But in the embedded system the software or the firmware of the embedded system is pre-programmed to perform some set of operations or it is non-alterable we can say. The camera is going to capture the things and it will store it in a memory card. That is the purpose of using camera. Camera cannot be doing some other functionality if we change the firmware. Means the firmware can't be changed here. Here we can program the device as per our requirement. Right? And the general purpose system is performance is the key deciding factor on selection of the system. How we are going to select a computer while purchasing? We are going to look at the performance of that. How faster it is or if it is a faster, it is a better one. That is how we are going to choose the general purpose system. If it is an embedded system, the application specific requirements. Depending on the application, we are going to check the performance of the device. Suppose if it is an uh, electronic washing machine. You are going to check the performance with respect to as per our requirement, whether it will, it will satisfy our criteria or not. That is what the performance with respect to the application is concerned. Means similarly power requirements and the memory usage. These are the deciding factors in embedded system. And in general purpose system, less or not at all 
टेलर टूवर्ड्स रिड्यूसिंग ऑपरेटिंग पावर रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑप्शन आर डिफरेंट लेवल ऑफ पावर मैनेजमेंट विल बी देर इन जनरल पर्पज सिस्टम बट हियर हाईली टेलर टू टेक अडवांटेज ऑफ ए पावर सेविंग मोड्स वाई वी काज इन ए एम्बेडेड सिस्टम समथिंग लाइक ए टॉय लाइक दिस इट विल बी ऑपरेटेड विथ ए बैटरी इफ इट इज ऑपरेटेड विथ ए बैटरी वी नीड टू सेव द बैटरी टू ऑपरेट दिस टॉय फॉर ए लॉन्गर ड्यूरेशन दैट इज अवर केस सो वी नीड टू ऑपरेट दिस डिवाइस विथ ए लेस पावर मीन्स पावर सेविंग मोड इज वेरी मच रिक्वाइर्ड हियर बट इन ए जनरल पर्पज सिस्टम द पावर सेविंग रिक्वायरमेंट इज सम अदर नेक्स्ट लेवल वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू टेक द पावर कंजम्पन एट द स्मॉल एंड ईच एंड एवरी ऑपरेशन राइट इट इज डिफरेंट लेवल ऑफ पावर एंड मैनेजमेंट विल बी देर एंड इन जनरल पर्पज सिस्टम रेस्पॉन्स रिक्वायरमेंट्स आर नॉट टाइम क्रिटिकल मीन्स विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू टाइम देर इज नो डेड लाइन इन द जनरल पर्पज सिस्टम जनरल बट इन एम्बेडेड सिस्टम्स फॉर ए सर्टन कैटेगरी ऑफ एम्बेडेड सिस्टम्स लाइक मिशन क्रिटिकल सिस्टम्स द रेस्पॉन्स टाइम इज हाईली क्रिटिकल आर दिस शुड परफॉर्म अप टू दिस टाइम or it should achieve the target up before this time that is what the deadline we say that will be there in embedded system that is less in general purpose system and in general purpose system need not need not to be deterministic in execution behavior but here in the embedded system execution behavior is deterministic for certain type of embedded system like hard real time systems there are different type of embedded system concepts are there like hard real system hard time hard real time soft real time like that if it is a hard real time means it should bound to the time it should execute with respect to the time is concerned it should not be any delay in the operation that is what the hard real time system is these are the few differences between general purpose system and embedded system the next topic is classification of embedded systems how to classify the embedded systems into categories the first thing is based on the generations based on the generations in the sense as we know the wireless generation or the mobile network generation evolved from 1g next 2g 2.5g and then 3g then 4g nowadays we are at the verge of getting 5g so this is what the evolution of mobile phone system or the communication system similarly the generations of embedded system is also categorized as first generation second generation third generation and fourth generation obviously there will be an improvement in the performance accordingly we are going to give the generations and based on the complexity also we can categorize the embedded system small scale embedded system medium scale embedded system and large scale embedded system let us get into these topics one by one and let us understand what is actually those categories are first generation in first generation embedded systems generally we will be having 8 bit microprocessors means the processor inside a first generation embedded system will be a 8085 processor or z80 these two are the name of the processors 8085 is one of the 8 bit microprocessor and similarly 4 bit microcontroller will be there and these embedded system processes simple hardware very simple hardware will be, will be there and very simple software will be there and some examples like digital telephone keypads stepper motor control units uh, can be the examples for the first generation embedded system then what is second generation in the second generation again the technology has evolved so we can able to use 16 bit microprocessors or 8 bit microcontrollers in our embedded systems so that level of embedded systems will be called as second generation systems where 16 bit microprocessors are 8 bit in the sense these processors are able to perform the operation of 8 bit if it is an 8 bit processor the input it can take and perform will be of 8 binary bits if it is a 16 bit microprocessor we say it can handle operations up to 16 bits so 16 bits operations in the sense it are these are complex operations so microprocessor can handle so if that processor is used that will be in second generation and they are more powerful compared to first generation and data acquisition systems uh, suppose the huge data has to be acquired where the sensor outputs are going to be considered so these systems these devices can be an example for second generation and then scada system scada means supervisory control and data acquisition here data acquisition is one of the major uh, example for a second generation system 
then we have third generation what is third generation again the processors are evolved uh, and domain specific processors are comes into picture domain specific in the sense suppose if you are using for a digital signal processing a digital signal processor is available and application specific integrated circuits means ICs are available these ICs are going to perform a particular application that is application specific ICs are comes into picture at that time if you use these kind of devices so that is categorized as third generation systems here uh, some pipelining in instruction handling and embedded real-time operating system evolved into embedded system means the concept of OS comes into picture to an embedded system in third generation the embedded system of this period is powerful of 32-bit microprocessor and 16-bit microcontroller you can clearly observe the difference between first second and third now starting with 8-bit then 16-bit now it is 32-bit microprocessors are used in third generation and hence operation has become much more powerful obviously as the number of bit processor increases it increases the uh, capacity of the processor to handle the data that's why it is much more powerful compared to the second generation here robotics comes into picture industrial process control uh, in the industry they started using and embedded networking are examples of the third generation system then what is fourth generation the fourth generation is the recent development of microprocessors advanced microprocessors are comes into picture and also microcontrollers like pic microcontroller and all evolved during these modern days so the concept of system on chip system on chip in the sense it is a kind of uh, ic again where all the system components will be there in a single silicon chip that is system on chip so then reconfigurable processors also comes into picture multi-core processors you can observe uh, dual core octa core processors are all available so co-processors also emerged into an embedded market that is an again making the embedded system more powerful in the performance so these systems make use of high performance real-time operating system in the third generation itself real-time operating system evolved into embedded industry again that becomes strong in the fourth generation high performance real-time operating systems comes into picture a digital cameras nowadays you can see uh, distance image can be captured by using a digital camera and smart devices comes into existence these are the examples for fourth generation so these are the four categories depending on the generation of evolvement in the technology and adaptation in the embedded system is concerned so the other category of classification is that depending on the scale again a small scale embedded system medium scale embedded system and then large scale embedded system are the three categories what is a small scale embedded system then it is again built using 8 or 16 bit microprocessors as we seen in the first or second generation so those small components will be called as a small scale embedded systems so where it can be the main programming tools used to uh, build the embedded system are editor assembler cross assembler or integrated development environment called ide tools generally we call it as ide it means integrated development environment means it is something like a cat tool and the hardware software complexities in small scale embedded system are very low means the complexity is less compared to the next versions electronic toy is an example for the small scale embedded system medium scale embedded system the embedded system with medium performance where obviously there will be an increment in the number of bit handling by the microprocessor it is 16 bit to 32 bit microcontroller or processors will be used and with that a6 means application specific integrated circuits or digital signal processors fall under the medium scale embedded systems you can easily compare these with respect to the first and second third fourth generations here these three categories will be directly mapped to those four generations and here they have both hardware and software complexities are increased and the main programming tools used in the medium scale embedded systems are c c plus plus java visual c plus plus and then uh, rtos real time operating system this is rtos means real time operating system and then debugger source code engineering tool simulator or again ide integrated development environment are used in the embedded system means medium scale uh, medium scale embedded system in the sense 
where the more programming languages are used in the embedded system. And in large scale embedded system, what are large scale embedded systems? Obviously, 32 bit to 64 bit microprocessors are going to be used or microcontrollers are used and RISC processors, reduced instruction set uh, processors and then system on chip, scalable and configurable processors are used in the embedded system. They are called as sophisticated embedded systems. Okay, these are called sophisticated embedded system means a sophisticated environment or the processor is available for us to build a complex embedded system. That's why these are named as sophisticated embedded systems. So they are used cutting edge applications, cutting edge in the sense yeah, advanced applications that need hardware software co-design means hardware and software will be uh, designed with hand in hand. Depending on the hardware, the software will be designed where the component has to be assembled into a final system. They also contain a high performance RTOS real time operating system and for task scheduling we are we can schedule the task in the embedded system in advanced embedded systems first this task has to be executed then the next task has to be executed when there is a third task comes when the second task is executing we need to handle that carefully these are the different uh, multiple operations and the task handling uh, things comes into picture in the large scale embedded systems. Similarly, prioritization, priority of the tasks, which task has to be uh, occurred first. Suppose if you are using a mobile phone, mobile phone can be an example for the uh, embedded system. Nowadays, smartphones are available. Smartphones are not example for the embedded system, not completely an embedded system it is. But the old phones, what we are going to use with the keypad, that can be a very good example for a large scale embedded system. Where prioritization means we can give an example like if we are in a call, if message comes, what we are going to do? Message will be obviously come and wait in the message log. After the call, we can see the message or message will be independent of the call. So something like that, the, there will be a priority always. Even if you are using a mobile uh, with a message, call will come into picture. That is what prioritization is and managing the things. This is what the categories of embedded systems and how they are evolved. And then which are all the major application areas of embedded system? One is consumer electronics. These consumer electronics is one of the major application in embedded system where we can see camcorders means camcorder in the sense video recorders and uh, we can save the video in the same device. Similarly to cameras, the camcorders are and then household applications like television, DVD players, CD players, washing machines, fridge, microwave, oven. These are also the examples for embedded systems and home automation systems like AC, sprinklers, intruder detection system. Automatically the siren is going to uh, make a sound when an intruder comes into uh, the home and closed circuit television cameras, fire alarms. These are the home automations where embedded system is used. And then in the automotive industry. Nowadays you can see many automobiles are, the cars will be having an automated uh, features like anti-lock brake system, engine cruise control system, ignition system, automatic navigation system. These are the embedded systems used in automotive industry. And also in the telecom sector like cellular telephones and then telephone switches, handsets, multimedia applications in the handsets are all comes under embedded systems itself. And also some computer peripherals like printers, printers are the best examples and also scanners, fax machines, these are comes under the embedded system applications. And then in networking, we can uh, use the routers for making the network connections and then switches, hubs, firewalls. So these are the categories of the network systems will be having an embedded system inside. And in the healthcare systems, ECG machine and then EEG scanners, X-ray, these are the uh, things where embedded system will be used in the healthcare and also in the measurement and instrumentation systems like digital multimeters, digital CROs are available, logic analyzer and the PLC systems, etc. And also in the banking system and in the banking sector, as we use uh, ATM machines, those are all the embedded systems, currency counters and the point of sales, these are the examples in banking sector also. And also card readers, RFID card reader, you might have observed nowadays in the tolls, uh, there is a fast tag line where we go, we can go, it will read the 
card easily so that is an example for the embedded system also so barcode reader smart card reader handheld devices and also an rfid reader also we can be taken as example where the fast tag is going to use the rfid so these are some of the applications we can list out um, many these are few of the applications and different areas where embedded system is going to be used thank you